and you're asking me questions that weren't in the pre-read, so I don't have a quick answer for you. I don't get uncomfortable easily. And I feel that's what simplicity is, right? Like what is sim simplicity is like if you don't have too many hiccups, you don't need too many luxurious things. Luckily, I was raised in a way where the basic is good enough. So anything you have more than the basic is a bonus. And with that attitude, you're just always going to be happy because if you're happy with dal chawal, anything more than that is amazing. All the kids loved me because now they've been seeing me on the internet. So even though I didn't go to school with them and I didn't have to do drama and, you know, all of that stuff like, like, you know, and be part of the gossip and all of like, you know, be on the top of the, you know, social chart, they knew me because now I'm famous and it felt so amazing that the same popularity I had of being the most popular person on the hill. Crazy Kiare, ta 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 Who is not an Aishwarya Rai fan? Like imagine like, Aishwarya Rai has gone to Paris for the L'Oreal show and Kendall Jenner has gone and taken a picture with her. Yeah. Kim Kardashian's come to India and she's gone and taken a selfie with Aishwarya Like, who is not an Aishwarya Rai fan? Thank you, Ori, for making time for us at Indian Express. Uh, thank you for inviting us to your house. It's a beautiful place. And in South Bombay, it's an Altamont Road, guys. Ori's house is... Uh -huh. Give away my address to everyone. No, no, I'm not telling you exactly uh -huh. where it is, right? It's exactly where it is. So now they know where to come and they'll see the car outside and find their way inside. It's very close to Antilia, so it's okay. Ori, so first of all, I know we've uh, planned this question, but I want to ask, <laughs> you know, as a warm-up question, hmm. who is Ori today and uh, how did Ori become the Ori that we see today? Now you're asking me questions that weren't in the pre-reads and I don't have a, a quick answer for you. Okay, who is Ori today? I can tell you Ori today is not the same Ori as he was yesterday. I can tell you the Ori today is not the same Ori that you saw last month because, you know, when I was little, someone told me that, um, that I got a haircut. My hair was long and I'd cut short. But my friends were like, oh my god, Ori's gonna have a new personality now. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, are you making fun of my haircut? And my friend was like, no, no, like every time you cut your hair, your personality changes a bit with it. And I realized that's kind of true. Like every time you change your hair or your look, you kind of do change with that. You know, and I feel in the past few months, I have gone from long black hair with a bun to 50% blonde hair to neon pink tips to red hair. I don't know if you've seen all these colors all over the internet. Then I cut it short. Just last night I changed it, I did the sides. So I am constantly changing and I feel like with my hairstyle and my look changes and my avatar changes, I really do think the personality is changing with it too. And sometimes even my tone of voice and um, yes. So who is Ori today? It's definitely ever changing. I don't know. How does anyone really know who they are today. I know the journey I'm on, but I don't really know who I am on that journey. Sometimes I'll see a picture of myself from like a week ago and I, I won't recognize myself. So yeah. But thanks for that monologue. Yes. When you spoke about moving out, I'm just going to shift next week. Uh, who is the real Ori? Is there a simple unknown side to you? Did you, did you see the backdrop of my house? See how simple this is? I love this painting by the way. Thank you. I think we had a parrot named Mittu who didn't and then one day never came back. Um, I'm actually very simple. Like I said, how funny are humans? We're like, you're just a body and you're like over decorated. So you can take the decorations up and you can take the decorations down. You can turn on the volume, turn off the volume. Um, one thing I do actually love about myself is that I actually, I would like to say don't have too many hiccups. Um, I am very able I think I'm, I'm very able, like I am, I'm not the most like, I don't get uncomfortable easily and I feel that's what simplicity is, right? Like what is sim simplicity is like if you don't have too many hiccups, you don't need too many luxurious things. Luckily I was raised in a way where the basic is good enough. So anything you have more than the basic is a bonus. And with that attitude, you're just always going to be happy because if you're happy with dal chawal, anything more than that is amazing, right? Sometimes, not too often. I mean, I love dal chawal. Who doesn't? It's like a staple food you love. But no, I'm again, I'm not going to sit here and say, I love dal chawal and so relatable. No, I'm not relatable. And I do love dal chawal, but would it be my preferred food if you say, what do you want to eat? And I'm not going to say dal chawal, but if that was what was offered to me, I would eat it. Like, I wouldn't complain either. Um, I had a phase where I used to get very, I still get very bad stomachs. I used to just eat curd rice for like weeks at a time. And I was absolutely fine with that, you know? So, Today you see me in a fancy car, but there was a time when I didn't have a fancy car. I used to have a second hand, I would like maybe call it third hand because it was my brother's 
second hand car that came to me. So if you count my brothers and other person, it's third hand. Honda CRV, that was my first car. And when I got my G Wagon, my Mercedes, it was really symbolic, not symbolic, it was really, um, what's the word? It was a very metaphor, not metaphorical. It was a very, not cinematic. There's a word for it, like it was like symbolic. Maybe let's call it symbolic. So I had this Honda CRV, and that car was the car I had through high school, and the car I always had. Actually, not high school, I had it in college. And I got the G-Wagon two years after I graduated college. And the month, I mean, the two month bracket of me getting the Mercedes, that's when it was like raining in Bombay and like roads were breaking and Valkeshwar had fallen down or like hanging garden, whatever. And my car was parked on the road outside. My white CRV and I had my white Mercedes and they both had the same number, 7200. Because that was the number I always had, so I moved forward with it. it was my, Parents had selected 790, I don't know, some way, or 7 plus 2 is 9, and I, I don't know all of that. And in the rain, a tree fell on my car and smashed it. Which one? The CRV. Oh but it was symbolic for life, telling me the yeah. time has come, like, let it go. And I remember when I got the Mercedes, I was so nervous to use it because I was like, it feels not me, like I'm sitting in such an expensive car. It was my dream car. All we had, used to tell my mom, when I grew up, I want the Mercedes Jeep. I didn't even know it was called a G Wagon, you know. Um, I just loved that car and I used to see Kylie Jenner drive and it was like, what a car. It was the most uncomfortable car in the world. You can't sit in it, it's very small inside. But it looked amazing and I didn't know that when I got it, I just, it was my dream car. And the CRV just got crushed. And no one messaged me saying, wow, your CRV, the car, we had so many memories but none of my friends cared. Um, but I was very happy with that CRV. Two weeks into the Mercedes, two months till, into the Mercedes, I still used that CRV as my preferred car. And then the time came when I had to use the new car video and that was God himself telling me like you worked hard move on <laughs> it's okay you know get out of your comfort zone drive the Mercedes everybody now wants a picture with you yes even Rihanna got picked with you she did I'm seeing you having parties for your fans and all I am oh my god Ori what is happening please tell us <laughs> So the fan party, and I've spoken about this extensively, so I'm not going to give you the biggest answer. I don't want you to have repetitive answers that other people have. But that was really a party because I was like, I am here today because of the fans. But for some reason, the commentator, tormentator, the hate people on Instagram is like, we made him, we made him. I was like, no, you didn't make me famous. Put your bloody, where, put your money where your mouth is. You didn't make me famous. Like I, I'm not someone who's chasing followers. I don't. I rather have less followers and high engagement. I rather have less followers with people who love me than a lot of followers that. You know, people ask you, would you rather have uh, a lot of friends that secretly hate you or no friends at all? I'm asking the question, would you rather have lots of followers who hate you or less followers who love you? I'd rather have less who love me. So all these people would like, you know, on Reddit and all, they were like, oh, we made this idiot famous, we made this clown famous. I was like, no, you didn't. Like, it's the, like, admiration I've gotten from a lot of people that, have, that has actually made me famous. And so many times people write me from corners of India and now the world, not just in India, but India mainly, obviously, um, saying we want a party with you, you're always at a party, we want to know how it's like to go to a party with Ori. I was like, say no more, let me have the Ori party. And when I put it up, like three tickets sold. I was like, shit. I thought it was going to be sold out in one day. I thought I was like, I've said this in an interview already, so I don't want to say it again, but I thought I was Kylie Jenner, like my site would go live and it would break the internet and break down. But no, three tickets sold, but I put up a month before the party. But the weekend the party had reached, online site was finished and we had 50 extra tickets at the door sold out so we had 550 total tickets sold out I think we reached 600 people because in the end we sold you had to get a t-shirt there was an Ori t-shirt was the ticket we were 550 tickets sold t-shirts so 150 more people we allowed in without um, t-shirts so that was amazing and at that party I gave I was like if you've come meaning you've come from Faridabad and Gurnabad and Pune and Bangalore had like eight people had come from Bangalore, left work, got on the flight, come to Bombay and went on the 4 a.m. back. I knew which flight they want because they went as a group of, they didn't know each other when they're leaving, they must have seen the t-shirts on each other. Went back to Bangalore to make it to work because the party was on a Monday. It was not a weekend in Bombay. You couldn't come on Friday, Saturday, leave the next day. This was a Monday night. Um, so I was like, if you have come for me, you're getting that picture. And I stamped everyone. So if you got a picture, you got a stamp. Doesn't mean I wouldn't talk to you or anything. Just means I'll prioritize the stampless over the stamped. And I didn't just give a picture. I made content pieces with them. I've sat and made reels. I've had shots. I've watched the video. I was not like, it was, it was not like a meet and greet where you come take, it was a, 
it was a party like everyone was jump we were jumping and dancing and it was a lot of fun um i didn't tell people the food inside was free because i didn't want people to come people came knowing nothing you came you didn't know if you were getting a picture you didn't know if you were getting a hug you didn't know if you were getting a touch you didn't know what you were getting you came just knowing the fact that already said i will be there meet and greet party here you came in my t-shirt no less so that was the ori party then when i came to riana she came to me and she was like i saw you from stage i saw those earrings i think these huge dandelion earrings and she's like i want those earrings and i was like then you must have it and i looked at my friends like take out rip your phone out rip your phone out and he's taking out his phone i'm like take the earring she's taking the earring she's lost the earring she came back for the other earring and then i pinned it on her dress but um she's a cool girl and um we spoke for a bit as much as you can talk to someone at a party without like you know clo- like suffocating them because she has other things to do and other people to meet and it wasn't my party but like i'm sure she'll remember me and the connection I actually had with riana not real connection but her best friend melissa m dollars on instagram was actually my role model growing up because when i was in college i'd seen a picture a meme of riana and her best friend walking out some club and the caption said riana's best friend lives like riana without having to do a single day of work and i told my brother look at it i want to be that and i want to be m dollars she lives like she is riana without doing a single day of work i want to do that i want to live like someone who's really rich and really famous and not have to do a single day of work so every day i'm looking at my friends and i'm like when are you going to become a billionaire so i can like live off it when are you going to become really rich so i can you know be the friend <laughs> um and similarly same with justin bieber he came across yeah. a- So I was just there enjoying the concert and he came from one side of the stage to the other side of the stage right at me in a crowd full of women and he's come and sang baby with me that yeah. it's so unreal and then he left and then he came back to sing another song with me so you know everyone was saying that he had an uncontrollable attraction to my aura I wasn't I didn't think that but other people were saying that social media also thinks that exactly and then he put the video up as well so I was just like maybe they right. i don't know maybe they right i i don't want to like flatter myself or gas myself and believe that but the possibility exists that there was obviously some fun energy exchange and he must have been like this is a cool guy and i want to jam with him how do you find yourself in the middle of everything bollywood and when was this i would like to say i find myself honestly in the middle of everything it's not just bollywood like people think it's bollywood cuz you was you If I put up 10 things in a day, your and nine are like business, law, hospital, I mean random topics, but one is Bollywood or media related, you're going to think you're going to remember that because it's memorable to you because they're recognizable faces. So people are like, "Oh, he's in the middle of everything." But no, I'm in the middle of every single thing. If there's a tornado, I would like to find myself in the eye of the tornado. Just there. Living, breathing, and my phone will be up documenting uh, yeah observing and document are bollywood friendships real i don't call my friendships with anyone in the film industry a bollywood friendship i am not actually in the film industry i'm not part of the film film fraternity i've never been in a film i've never worked on a film set i'm not even interned or anything of the sort i actually find film really 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 difficult i act in reels and i like to Where I would like to maintain that status of being an Instagram actor, like an Instagram model. I'm an Instagram actor, so I don't. Ha- I wouldn't say these are Bollywood friendships. I'm not in Bollywood. I didn't meet anyone via Bollywood. No one in Bollywood is my competition. I don't have a contemporary. It's not like I'm competing with. Them. These are my friends. These are my. If, if I like them and they like me and we are friends, whoever the, you're thinking of in your mind that this is already a Bollywood friend. No, that's my friend. I don't have. a quote on quote bollywood friendship and there are no other livers so if my industry is the liver industry i don't have a contemporary in that industry worthy of my competition that i could have a fake friendship with you know so yes these are my friends like if you see me with someone they're my actual friend if you don't see me with them uh, were you always so popular while in yes. school yes i was i was always popular I just made a vlog where I revisited my boarding school in Kodai Canal and if you see it I extensively me and my roommate talk about how popular I was in school and what was really nice to see is that even though I was so popular in school whether it was because I made myself popular or naturally popular was not the question I was so popular now 10 years later I revisited Kodai Canal and I was just as popular all the kids loved me because now they've been seeing me on the internet so even though I didn't go to school with them and I didn't have to do drama and you know all of that stuff like 
like you know and be part of the gossip and all of like you know be on the top of the you know social chart they knew me because now I'm famous and it felt so amazing that the same popularity I had of being the most popular person on the hill back then I maintained that status and there's a video of all the kids coming to take we had a meet and greet and it was amazing uh, when did you realize that you should be monetizing your social media game I actually hmm when did i realize how do i answer this cuz i don't actually care to monetize my social media game i just i really like when i'm when i'm creating something it's never really about the money you can't actually buy an ori creation like if i'm creating a piece of content it's cuz i actually wanted to create it the ashoka trend you know the ashoka trend na 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 yeah. It's a it's an Insta trend, right? And I love jumping on the trend and orifying it. I love taking trends and making it my own. That's what that's what you're meant to do with a trend. You're not supposed to do it the way everyone's doing. You have to do something unique. So this is a a female trend. It's a girl's get ready with me putting my makeup on trend. So I was like, how do I orify this trend? I was like, I haven't shaved in three years. Let's do the Ashoka trend, which was very difficult. Um, so I took help from some girl I found online. Shruti had done it. I would have never made a reel just for. money i don't think like that what was your first paycheck in life it could be story behind that how much did you get how old how old you were so my first paycheck that i mean the oldest one i can remember right now i don't know if this was my first but this is the oldest one i can remember is i my parents were always like you must work working is very important and imagine today i'm a boy who like actively talks about how you should not work <laughs> my mother must be crying somewhere um but um hard work was always like something they really instilled in us both my parents have their own businesses they grew up working um they independent it was very important for them for us to be independent so every summer during my college days i always had to take a summer job like an internship you didn't have to earn money but it's about the concept of being able to write that into your life that discipline kind of and that attitude Um so my first summer off from college I interned at Vogue India. I don't actually remember how much they paid but that was the first time I actually got a check in my name and I gave it to my parents as a be proud of me. Um it was a hard job because I interned with the marketing team and I interned on the Vogue wedding show and I can go down a, a rabbit hole of memories and a laundry list of like fun and torture and torture and fun and late nights and tears was we put up that show which was a really big show the Vogue wedding show. and the 100 calls i had to make to invite people and this and that that's a whole interview for another time i have enough content content from that interview but i don't remember it was an intern salary in india is really not i don't think it was much like a more probably more like uh could you put a number on it i can't remember i just actually can't i'm trying to remember for my own self but i just can't it was more like a souvenir than a paycheck but um but i did it and i got the check and i and i said i got my paycheck in your opinion are money and happiness related you know i don't want to give you a like again i hate those people who say things like no money and happiness are not related no money and money and happiness are 110% related you anyone who said money doesn't buy happiness like blair like the amazing american fictional professor blair, blair waldorf from gossip girl once said whoever said money cannot buy happiness did not know where to shop <laughs> sure some things can make you temporarily happy like you buy a nice bag great made you happy happiness is over you have to buy another bag buy another bag and buy another bag and buy another bag and keep extending the happiness or buy yourself an experience that makes you happy buy someone you love something that and that action that you do will make you happy right like i love i'm very generous and i like when people get happy when i give them things i like when i come back from overseas from like two months and i give my mom something sweet and she is happy because she remembers i thought of her whether it's an expensive item or cheap and sometimes it's something dumb and sometimes it's something nice but she gets so happy that i get really happy so yes it is whoever said you can be happy with like zero like rupees in your bank account is an idiot because you can't you're going to be so stressed like unfortunately we are slaves to the finance system that we've created and you have to be able to do things in life and to do things you don't have to be the richest person in the world you can be happy with simpler things you can be happy with cheaper things i'm not saying you have to have all the money in the world but it would be silly to say that they're not 
related. How related they are, I don't know if they're first cousins or siblings or second cousins or parent and kid, but they are related. Tell us about the first time you fell in love or at least you thought you did. Every time I fall in love, when it ends and you get over it, I feel like, was I really even love? And then when you fall in love, the next time, you're like, I don't think that was love. Because when you can, you only know love when you're feeling love. Once that feeling is gone, like you're in love, like either you get married and it goes on forever, it ends, right? And the heart's meant to be broken. Um, yeah, I feel like the heart is meant to be broken. You're meant to fall in and out of love many times. I think it's a, it's a um, privilege to have fallen in and out of love. I feel every time you fall in love with someone and it ends, you learn so much about yourself, you change so much through the heartbreak, you grow so much. Of course, some people can spiral out of control and go downhill, but hopefully we are not those people and never to become that. Um, so yeah, so I feel every time I fall in love once and now I've been that, it's been so long since the last time that I don't even know if the last three times I'd say I think I'm in love was that you'll even love. So I don't really remember those times and I feel like I erase them because once it ends, I really work hard to put those pasts in the past. Yeah. If that makes sense. Was there any Hindi movie actor or actress that you were a fan of as a child? Crazy Kiare, ta -ta 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 -ta. Who was not an Aishwarya Rai fan? Who was not an... Uh, who is not an Aishwarya Rai fan? Like imagine like... Aishwarya Rai has gone to Paris for the L'Oreal show and Kendall Jenner has gone and taken a picture with her. Yeah. Kim Kardashian's come to India and she's gone and taken a selfie with Aishwarya Like, who is not an Aishwarya Rai fan? And if you watch her, and I don't watch too many Bollywood movies because my Hindi is just not that good. It takes me long to watch it and I to ask questions and questions. And But I watch the big ones and the great ones and the ones my friends are in as well, of course. And those are usually good, thank God. I haven't had to like lie to them yet. Um, but Aishwarya Rai in Crazy Kiari, I've watched that video a billion times. How can someone look that amazing? Is it AI? But they didn't have AI back then, so she had to have looked like that. Um, she was in Pink Panther as well. Like, wow, like, even like her Oprah interview, it was an Oprah interview, right? Where Oprah says, asks her something about marriage in India, and she gives all these like sassy responses. And, and that one iconic line, I think Simi Ganeriwal asks her, or K K not Kejo, it's definitely Simi Ganeriwal asks her. Um, she was like, can you walk past a mirror without looking at it? And she's like, yeah, but why hurt the mirror? And I was like, I, what does that mean? And then I under, when I took some time, then I realized like, why hurt the mirror's feelings by not looking at it? I was like... Yeah. How do you think like that? How do you think like that, yeah. You said something while answering this that you've not had to lie to your friends yeah. about their movie. Yeah. If there was a bad movie by your friend, my face can't lie. lie. I'm not an actor. I don't act. There's a reason I don't like my. I cannot hide my feelings. I cannot hide my feelings. I'm sure anytime you see me anywhere, there are always a lot of expressions on my face because I cannot hide the feelings. So I it just. And also I don't like lying because I feel like lying always leads to more lies and what happens after you lie is you forget you lied because you, you remember the truth unless you believe the lie. There are people who will teach themselves and many times I've taught myself to believe the lie because if you believe the lie and you live the lie then the lie is true because you've made it part of your truth. But most of the time when you lie, if I lie to you right now, let's say I've said something in this interview that's untrue and I've said it for the sake of the interview. What happens when two years later I forgot we spoke and I forgot I said it and I give you a completely different answer. I mean, whoever was interviewing me a different answer then someone on the internet will remember that where he said this year and this year and will write a story about it. And I would love that, but, um, but I don't like lying because I feel if you lie today, it'll lead to a lie tomorrow and also you shouldn't lie to your friends because it's, it's good constructive criticism to tell someone they were bad at something. Like, Many times I've had to say that to my friends. Once my friend made a piece of jewelry for me and she's like, I'm sending this to you, I made this for you. And I replied to her, I was like, I love you, but this is hideous. And I'm sorry that you worked so hard to make this for me. And I can lie to you and accept this, but I will never wear it and it will go to waste. But if you don't send it to me, you can melt it and take the diamonds out and keep, like, this can be salvaged and you can lose less money. But if you give it to me, it will sit in a drawer and then I hate wasting. Um, I don't like 
excess inventory. I don't want to own too many things that aren't being used. I don't want to have a closet and boxes and, and like um, miser. No, no, what's it called? Miser? No, hoarder. I don't want. I hate hoarding and I hate wastage. So I was like, you rather and and I'm good. I told her because the next design she made was great, right? I'm going to cut this uh, little piece that you just said because mm. I'm about uh, this coming and I hate people when they just give me gifts that I don't like. So I'll use that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think you're a good friend to have for all this. I mean, I've only seen you with actors, but I think that if you are someone who doesn't lie and who can give a right feedback, I think. But shouldn't you know, everyone give the right yeah, feedback? But you know how if you don't is, give a friend the right feedback, but the you're not. Is weird. You're not. Then you're not the. You're not a friend. Right? You're just not a. You're a fake friend. Thank you so much, Audi. I mean, this was really fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Koman. I had so much fun answering your questions. Oh. I am not comfortable with saying that you're watching me on IndianExpress.com. <laughs> <laughs>